May the words that I speak draw us ever closer to the God who draws us into delight and into rest. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. About a year ago, I was scrolling through my social media when I came upon this video that stopped me in my tracks. In this video, there was this big, beefy, ultra-muscular, very healthy-looking dude, and he had his finger raised towards the camera, and he said, are you tired of not doing the things you say you're going to do? He then continued, and he said, do you lack the willpower to stop yourself from doing those things that you don't want to do? I took stock of myself, slumped on the couch, deep in a scroll hole, having been on instant, instant messenger and on Instagram and on Facebook for way too long. And I had a bag of open chips in my lap, and I hadn't been to the gym in a good few weeks, and I thought, well, I should probably hear what this guy has to say. What he had to say took me by surprise because the very next thing he did was he stood up and stood next to this huge tub full of water and chunks of ice. He then proceeded with nothing but a bathing suit on to step into this tub, slowly lower himself in with absolute control despite the frigid water up to his chin. And then he looked at the camera and he said, if you can conquer this, you can conquer anything. The point of the video was essentially a promo for what's called a cold plunge. The idea is that if in the morning you can get into a tub full of ice cold water or even stand in your shower with it at the coldest setting, if you can bear that, well then all those things that you say you're going to do but you haven't done, those are easy. And all those things that you've been doing that you know you really shouldn't be doing, well, those are overcomable because you've done this. I thought, well, I want to give it a shot. <laughs> Maybe stupidly, but I decided to give it a go. And on a freezing cold January morning, I turned my shower to its absolute coldest setting and got in, and I actually did that for a few weeks. I will tell you this, it was freezing cold. It definitely woke me up, and believe it or not, I actually did get to the gym for the first week. And then about a week and a half in, I found myself slumped on the couch, deep in my scroll hole, bag of chips open in my lap. It turns out that the power of human behavior is no match for the power of the cold plunge. I feel some level of relief around the fact that our behavior, our tendency to really work so hard at getting those things that we want to do and falling into the traps of doing the things we don't want to do is something that has been happening for thousands of years. In fact, we have evidence of it right here in our reading in Romans. The Apostle Paul is complaining about this very thing that he finds in himself. He starts out, I do not understand my own behavior, for I do not do what I actually want to do, but I, I end up doing the thing that I not only don't want to do, but half the time I end up doing the thing I hate. He says, I, we have the willpower, we have the desire, we have the drive to do what is right and what is good and what is holy, but then we go to reach for those things and our actual behaviors, our actual actions, they're much slipperier than that. This is relatable. How many times do I wake up and open my eyes and I decide that I am going to be the best mom I can be that day and it is not even before breakfast that I have lost my cool? 
or I decide that this is the week where I'm going to spend time in God's word and I'm going to pray and then I'm binge watching Netflix and I can't stop. It's so frustrating. Why do we do this? Why do we get caught in these patterns, in these habits, and why do we work so hard to undo it, to find ourselves back to where we start? Paul wants to answer this. And he pulls it out into something that is beyond just us. In fact, he talks about this in a way that is cosmic. He says, there is a war of laws. There is the law of our created being, who we were created to be, God's good plan for us, God's good plan for the world, and how that is supposed to be. And then there is the law of our very broken world and its very broken systems. And those two things are at a tug and a pull, and one is always trying to pull us, and we are trying to resist it, but it is really hard. And Paul says that if, if you really pay attention, you can really see this dynamic between you and this system. Paul says that deep in his being, there is a place of delight of joy, of rest in who God created him to be, and rest, delight, and joy in God's own plan for his life, a plan for our lives that we see written out in the scriptures that we see within our relationship with God. And then there is that other that brokenness, that system that pulls us back again and again with easy fixes, quick solutions, things that we grab for that fall to dust in our hands and we just can't seem to make it work. It's hard and it's frustrating. Paul continues on and he sees this struggle in his own being, in his own body, in our own bodies, and we see it in ourselves, in our communities. We see it written out in our families. Sometimes not just these little things like going to the gym and stop eating enough cookies or whatever it is, but it's bigger things too, that this broken system tries to offer us that falls apart and actually, in some ways, ends up being more destructive. When we feel inadequate, when we feel like we are unwanted, that broken system offers us the opportunity to put 150% of ourselves, 100 hours a week, as much as we can pour into our careers and our jobs, and it doesn't really bring us delight, and it doesn't really let us rest. And when we feel so frustrated and upset that our community isn't what it should be, that our country isn't what it should be, that our church isn't what it should be, that our family isn't what it should be, that broken system offers up to us the chance to be righteously angry, to call people toxic, to draw lines in the sand, to boot people out. And it doesn't make us feel delight and it doesn't give us rest. Or in those moments where we feel so alone and so disconnected and we feel lost because we are grieving loss, that broken system offers up to us bottle after bottle, one too many, substance after substance, one too many, a buffet of pornography, bad sexual choices, all of these things that in the moment feel right, but in the end don't bring delight. And they leave us feeling more shameful and broken. And when we see that our bodies are falling apart, that sickness comes and that illness stalks and we are 
not happy about this reality, that broken system offers us up an endless array of diets and harsh regimes and ice plunges and what have you, and none of it brings us delight. And I can tell you that because I stole, st stood in that freezing cold shower on a January morning and it really did not bring me delight. We were created for delight. We were created for rest and yet we so often go to grab the wrong thing. And then we try so hard to fix it and we feel burdened, and we feel ashamed, and we feel bogged down, and we go to every length, and we feel powerless, and we feel helpless, and that, weirdly enough, is the good news. The good news is that we actually are powerless and helpless against these things. This is what anybody in AA will tell you that the best news they've heard is that they are powerless against their actions, against their behaviors, against these offerings from a broken world on a broken silver platter. And that's just the reality. And this is where Paul is driving towards in this passage. Yes, we have these things that we wanna do that we don't do, and we have these things that we are doing that we don't want to do, and it's okay. Because we have a savior who comes and it is the only way through, and it is a way of delight and rest. This is what Jesus offers in our gospel reading today. A chance to take off these burdens and to take on the delight and the rest of Jesus. This is the glory of Jesus on the cross, that Jesus with arms wide open it's just waiting for us to carry all of this stuff, the do's and don't do's, the traps, the addictions, every little bit of it, lay it down so that Jesus can pick it up and take it down to death with him where it belongs. And so that we can then be raised into new life with Jesus. Life that is not based on condemnation, but is instead based in transformation through Jesus. This is the invitation that we are offered today. That Jesus offers us. That we get to put down all of this stuff, all of this striving, all of this trying, all of the cold plunges and what have you. And we get to just rest in delight in who God created us to be and let Jesus handle the heavy lifting. That is the good news, that Jesus is merciful, that Jesus is gracious, that Jesus calls us not to conform to the broken patterns of the world, but instead transform. And the best news of all is that you don't have to get into a bucket of ice to get it. Amen.